the number 30 Ford Credit Falcon of Glen Seaton. Let's have a look at the grid for this third and final race of the day. And he's going to be trying to make it three from three. That's for sure. He is on top, off pole position, alongside John Bow. Russell Ingle and Mark Scaife share the second row. Third row to grid is Larry Johnson. Larry Johnson. Larry Perkins and Dick Johnson. <laughs> Fourth row to grid is Tony Longhurst and John Fulcar. We go back to row five, it's Mark Cool and Stephen Richards. Row six, Alan Jones, that was a good recovery from him in the last race. And Greg Murphy in uh, position 12. Row seven is Wayne Gardner and Steve Ellery. Row eight is Trevor Ashby and Mark Larkin. We move on back to the ninth row, it's Steve Johnson and Peter Brock who had some bad luck in that last one. David Parsons and Darren Hossack, they share row 10. Row 11 is Terry Finnegan and Ray Hislop. Row 12 is Malcolm Seneca and Peter Lawrence. As the cars weave their way around, Alan and McCarthy is to the, bringing up the rear. The one off row 13. Now, a little bit of info for you that we've just received from race control. We read out to you there that Larry Perkins would be starting from position five. The word we have is that due to that altercation with Peter Brock in that last event, he will start rear of grid. Now, I guess us like you, we're going to have to wait until they come down. There is no... Larry Perkins there. The Castrol Commodore you can see just behind the Shell Helix Falcon is Russell Ingle. So it looks like the word that we have from race control is true. Well, the thing was that um, Greg Murphy got his leg slapped for nipping up the inside of Wayne Gardner. So I suppose they thought it was only right that um, Larry should get his leg slapped for um, puncturing Brocky's rear tyre. Well, there you go. Look at it. Right to the back. Behind oh. David Parsons and Darren Hossack is Larry. There he is. He will not be happy sitting back there. He will not be happy because the point is the first first corner here, we've seen what it's like. It's all a bit uh, like Piccadilly Circus and uh, for him to be back there, it's more or less the end of the story. Now this is an important race for Glenn Seaton, so to John Faulkner. I've been telling you right throughout the day, he hasn't won a round here at Sandown in 10 years, Glenn Seaton, so this race could break the hoodoo for him and it would be great. Oh, that'd be really nice because every time I've spoken to him before the race and after the race, even after the second one, he said the third one ain't over yet. <laughs> so he's looking good. He's on top of the points. Maximum points, two wins from two starts. John Bauer's been going very well. We're only a few moments away. There's the green flag. Keep your eyes on the two quiet achievers today, Longhurst and Johnson. They've been plugging away nicely. Set for a start. Mark Scaife is on your extreme left. We are away. John Bauer gets away to a great start. So too did Alan Jones. He came blasting through the middle and Scaife moves right across very quickly. Yeah, it's a watch for, watch for Bowie. Oh, Scaife, he looks like up the inside of Bow, was it? I don't know, couldn't see. Gardner having a look up the inside. This is on board with Dick Johnson. This is a tight section of the circuit. He's tucked in behind the better electric. Oh, look at oh, that. Was that Larkham? Mark Larkham it could have been. Demolition Derby. Yes. Indeed it was. Mark Larkham well, in the minor 10 Falcon, so at least he's able to continue. But oh, Larry Perkins. Larry Perkins. This is what I was saying about Larry. You know, you've got that problem. Everybody's trying to get in and out of there, and when you're in the middle of the pack and you get something go wrong, or somebody touched, then Larry's caught the brunt of it. Well, he will just be ropeable at the moment, not only being made to start rear of grid, but now have a look at the front of that car. We'll have a look at a replay of that right now. Have a look to the right-hand side of your screen. There the action begins. Crunch, they're all going into each other. All trying to sort themselves out. Half of them ending up on the grass. Larkin continues on. I didn't quite pick up uh, Perkins. No, me neither. Me neither. I think he was uh, right in the middle of it. I think he was in the uh, in the front of it. So there is Larry Perkins with a very wounded Castrol Commodore. Things continue on. We go back up the front. It's Seaton, Bow, Scaife, and Ingo will be flying the Castrol sign by himself. Murphy, Murphy and Faulkner. Whoa, Faulkner is right up in the there. background there. What was that? Oh, that was a lock up and a half. Nobody going off, everybody's still on. This is a great race by John Faulkner at the moment. He's sitting in sixth position, fifth position. That's a great effort by him. Glenn Seaton, the number 34 Credit Falcon. Can he make it three from three? He would certainly be on top of the championship points then. I was, ta I was talking to John Bow and Mark Scaife, and they were saying that... Uh, they reckon that um, Glenn's just playing with them because uh, they catch the gap up, especially John Bow. So they get right up behind Glenn and then he just ease out the gap again. And then he pull it back again and he just ease it out again. So he's doing the right thing looking after his tyres. Well, in the early non-qualifying sessions yesterday, oh. as uh, Glenn comes around Larry, 
And that's allowed John Bow to close right up, so too Mark Scape. This would be great to see Mark Scape finish in the top three and end up with a podium finish for the day. That would be fantastic. Greg Murphy has now got himself past John Faulkner and Perkins is in the pits. We'll see if we can go down there shortly to Mark Osler, but we'll get back to the action. It's Seaton, Bow, Scaife, then Ingle, then Murphy, Faulkner. They're your top half dozen. That's great drive from Faulkner, you know, when he considered that he's a privateer. He was saying in the press conference uh, that he can't, he couldn't seem to buy the extra seconds of the factory cars, but uh, so far it's not doing so bad. Well, and a guy in only his second Shell Australian touring car season, it's not a bad effort. Stevie Richards is up there, that's good work by him. I can see Alan Jones just behind Tony Longhurst. You're looking there at Russell Ingall's car. Um, Russell said that uh, he was, uh, this is on board with uh, Russell Ingall. He was saying that um, the car, the power started to go off three parts of the way through the race, the, the second race, and then the temperature went right up, off, the, off the end of the clock. So he contacted his pits and said, listen, this thing's cooked, get another engine ready. And the guys have changed an engine in Ingle's car in just over an hour, Murphy late on the brakes there. Just over an hour, that's not too bad, is it? Not too bad at all as we watch some fantastic pictures. Rear view pictures. Down the main straight they come, reaching speeds of close to 260 kilometres per hour. You watch the grandstand there disappear very quickly. Down through the gears, they hit back down the third gear through turn one. Up one. Coming up to Murphy Gardner corner. <laughs> As it's now done. <laughs> These are fantastic pictures. Have a look at Greg Murphy come right up on Russell Engel. This is going to be really interesting, Lee, if we get uh, the Murph and Ingle together because, you know, they've, uh, there's not an awful lot of sort of love lost there. Now, watch this. Have a look at this. Here neither comes is Murphy. Ne neither is going to... Oh, look at the speed of Murph's thing. Now, oh. Russell Ingle comes back. He won't want to have anything to do with this. And he uh, closes Greg Murphy out. So, these two had a confrontation at Phillip Island. There's been a bit of a beat-up in the media, a bit of a war of words, but now it comes down to action on the track. Yeah, well, they're, they're calling uh, Russell Ingle now the enforcer, and maybe after today they'll call Murph the exterminator. <laughs> Number eight, the Castrol Commodore of Russell Ingle. This is only his second season in the Shell Australian Touring Car Championship and second season with the Perkins outfit as well. Coming into this uh, meeting, he won five from 11 races. He hasn't had such a good day today as Murphy. Goes the outside, we're on board now. It's Russell Ingle and he goes the outside option. That's the long way around for Murphy. Ingle maintains that position. I think this has got to end in tears. Oh, what, what do you reckon, Lee? It's, uh, it's looking very, very close at the moment. Greg Murphy will want to keep his head, though. He had that altercation with uh, Wayne Gardner earlier this morning. He just wants to get points. He needs to get points. He needs to stay there. Down in the pits is Mark Osler. Yeah, thanks, Lee. I was just trying to get some words out of Larry Perkins. He totally ignored me, walking away, shrugging his shoulders. He didn't want to say a thing. But I know when he got out of that car, he went straight to the clerk of the course, spent five minutes up there, and he's come down again. So uh, I don't know what's going on, but he is not a happy champion. Well, your top ten on the Shell Helix race course, seat, Bow, Skate, Ingle, Murphy, Faulkner, Johnson, Richards, Longhurst, and Alan Jones sitting there in tenth position. Gardner back in eleventh. The best of the privateers is John Faulkner. He's doing a terrific job in sixth. You look at Ingle, Ingle and Murphy have banged each other about five times so far, so it's, uh, I'll be totally amazed if this doesn't end in tears. Greg Murphy, we're watching the view out of the back of Russell Ingle's car. And if anybody wants to talk about parity and equality so far in the races we have had in the Shell Australian Touring Car Championship, we've had eight races so far, not including this one, four Holden victories, four Ford victories. So it is dead level. But Glenn Seaton could upset the balance after yeah. this one. He can. It'll be good for Seaton if he uh, if he can win all three today. It's. Uh... You know, he's had a, the occasional rough period and when things all come together again for him, and as he says, he hasn't had a lot of luck here. And um, it's nice when you work hard at it. Still watching the battle between Ingle and Murphy. Yeah, Nate. Murphy just plugging away. Behind these two is John Faulkner. He is going well. We go on board now with Faulkner as Murphy oh, locks it up. <laughs> That's a great drive from Faulkner really is excellent. Keep in mind this is a non-factory car. John Faulkner is a privateer. He is renowned in super speedway. 
He's not exactly inexperienced, though, is he? No, not in terms <laughs> of driving. Very handy on the big ovals in Oscar and NASCAR. This is only his second season for the Shell Series. We go back to Russell Ingalls car. Greg Murphy just slightly pulling out of the draft there. He wasn't as close as what he was, say, two laps ago, but he comes right up under brakes. Greg Murphy up on the Castro Commodore of Russell Ingall. Now, what neither Ingall nor Murphy can afford to do is knock each other out of this because, uh, you know, it's getting pretty tight at the top points-wise now, so it will be silly on either's behalf. They have to realise, OK, they both want to beat one another, but the name of the game to win a championship is to finish races. You need those points. Turn back the clock quite a few years when, uh, well, not that many years ago, pre-1992 when you only used to have one race per day. Oh, oh that's Greg that Murphy say. this. Ingall doesn't want to let go. Could he do a Larry Perkins yes. here? <laughs> I was thinking exactly the same thing. Same section of the track. Murphy, though, just tucks in behind. While these guys are battling it out, John Faulkner has been able to close the gap. He is, uh, he is less than a second behind. You can see that gap. There's Faulkner. Here he comes hard up on the brakes. Look at Faulkner. I tell you what, if Faulkner gets involved in this, you'd have to give him a bravery award. He is a very hard driver, John Faulkner. He likes to mix it. He likes to muscle it. They come down on the main straight again. This is the rear view from Russell Ingalls' car. There's the split. Watch Greg Murphy. Will he try for the inside option? Ingalls driving quite defensively. Murphy goes for the outside option. Moves back in behind Russell Ingalls. So the pressure is on the Castrol Commodore driver, Russell Ingalls. That's a pretty wide um, Commodore he's driving at the moment there, Russell, isn't it? <laughs> Indeed it is. He was leading Whoa, the championship coming touch. into this round by 10 points. Over Glenn Seaton, it won't be that way at the end of this day. Hasn't had the best of days, Russell Ingall. That was a really brave move on uh, Murphy's behalf, but uh, look at Faulkner now ca catching uh, Ingall. I can't believe that's uh, quite incredible. Lap 9 of 16, so we're over the halfway mark. We're on board with JF, John Faulkner, the Fisher and Pikel entry through these S's. He is right on the back of Russell Ingall, who we believe the, the word that we've got, Barry, is that he's got a new motor in for this race. Well, he has. You know, the mechanics put it in in uh, just over an hour, as I said before, and uh, that's an awful lot of hard work. That's on board with uh, John Faulkner. Just have a little look there and see who's, who's behind. In actual fact, you should be more worried about who's in front because uh, he's got a really good chance of uh, catching Ingall. Lap time-wise, he was just over half a second quicker last lap than Ingall. So, oh, locking her up inside front there. Barry, this uh, isn't relevant to the battle that we're watching at the moment, but I've just received word from uh, the race officials that Larry Perkins has been excluded from the results of race two. Oh, now, uh, from our information, that would only be because of that altercation with Brock, you'd imagine. I don't know. We don't actually know what, uh, what the score was at uh, that uh, crash that happened on the first lap, do we? So, who knows? But anyway, that's the information. Perkins excluded from race two, so he won't get any points for that one. We get back to the action. Lap 10 now of 16 time is winding down. Here's the two quiet achievers of the day, the two Falcon drivers, the Shell Helix Falcon of Dick Johnson and the Castrol Falcon of Tony Longhurst. They've just been plugging away and doing quite nicely, getting some good championship points back in the minor placings. And they're catching Faulkner without any shadow of a doubt. Greg Murphy is setting the fastest pace at the moment as we go on board the Shell Helix Falcon. Look at Dick Johnson. Rear view mirror, side mirror. He's looking all over the place. He knows that Longhurst is making him work hard. The view from the roof. There's the battle in front, Faulkner chasing Engel. You ride with Dick Johnson at the moment, who's currently sitting in seventh position. That is a quick left-hander off the end of that straight. Just back a gear and then back on it again. That's, that's fast. Under the Dunlop Bridge, we go back on board. Have a look at, have a look at Longhurst, down the back side of the car there. Tony Longhurst is yes. all over Dick Whoa, Johnson. Whoa, gotcha. Got oh, him. dear me. Side by side, the two Falcon drivers. A little bit of touch and go. Dick gets a little bit out of shape. That's given Longhurst the good run on the inside. Now have a look there. Johnson having a look across. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> two Queenslanders. Down the main straight they come. This should give Longhurst the run into the corner. Dick's hard on the brakes. You can see that right front locking up a little. But Longhurst got the good run through, so he moves up one position better. Up now into seventh. This is a Yokohama battle against the Dunlop battle. It'd be really interesting to see uh, the latter stages of the road, well, the last sort of couple of laps, uh, the difference in the tyres. On paper, the Yokohama shouldn't be as good. Well, just behind this battle, 
We should make mention that Alan Jones and Wayne Gardner have worked their way into the top ten. That's a great effort by them. Back behind in 11th is Stevie Richards. Brock is in 12th and Poole is in 13th. We watch Dick Johnson hard at work. Yeah, it looks like he's having a bit of puff and blow. Whoa, lift her up. Keeping you up to date with the head of the field, Seaton oh, has about a three and a half second lead. Over. John Baumark, Scaife is still in third. Here's the battle now. Murphy chasing Scaife. Here we go, coming out of Simico Corner onto the main straight. It's Yokohama, shot Commodore of Scaife, a Bridgestone shot Commodore of Murphy. Murphy's looking for the inside line now, and Scaife looks like he's moved over and has let him through. Indeed he has. So Murphy's got the run. No, oh, it looked like Mark was going to let him through, but that is certainly not the case. No, I don't. Listen, when you start fighting with Scaifey, you're fighting with the wrong bloke. You know, he's a very, very hard man. Fair guy, but really uh, definitely doesn't give way. Hasn't it been a terrific comeback to V8 racing, for V8 supercar racing for Mark Scaife? There's the Shell Helix race score. Seat now, Scaife and Murphy. That's the battle on screen now. Then we go back to Ingle, still sitting in fifth. Here comes Murph up the outside now. He's putting the pressure on. Mark Scaife, but scapey has got the run through. This little change of direction. The Gibson Motorsport Commodore has been operating beautifully today. A third and a fourth so far. And he's still sitting in the top three at the moment. Yeah, I, I reckon that Murph's going to have a bit of a struggle here. We'll have to have a look top right, top uh, straight speed. Uh, top end speed at the end of the straight and just see who's got uh, the most grunt. I looked before, it looked um, pretty even. Down the main straight now, they're about to move on to lap 13. They have got four laps left to run. That's all the time that Greg Murphy has as he makes the inside move again on Mark Scaife. Will it be successful this time? Yes. It is. Yeah, it was a slipstream job and uh, there was nothing that Scaife could do about it, really. So, both of those guys running in the 115 second bracket seat and uh, Bow running in the 114. So these two were running a little slower, obviously, because of the battle they were having. They were slowing each other up just a touch. We have a look back in the pack. It's Ingle, then Faulkner. Longhurst has pulled away. Here's AJ now starting to make a move on Dick Johnson. Up the hold and back straight they go. Alan Jones and the Komatsu Falcon starting to make a move. Now he has a look up the outside of Dick Johnson. Dick's going to have the better run through the change of direction there. But maybe AJ will take the Perkins line. <laughs> <laughs> the grass track, dirt track option. Larry Perkins did a tremendous job in uh, the previous race to hang on to that machine. Unfortunately, he has been excluded from the points if you've just joined us. We go back on board with Dick Johnson. He's in the hot seat. Alan Jones is making him work for his money today. Well, he's not having an easy day, is he, DJ? He's got lot, he had Longhurst, now he's got AJ, and uh, neither of them are sort of uh, throwing a towel, guys. We go back on board with Dick Johnson and the Shell Helix Falcon. There's the gap you can see. Probably about three car lengths between the two Falcons. Into turn one they come. Alan Jones, he hasn't had the best of days. He was certainly Mr. Consistency coming into this round, but that was upset by uh, an incident in race one. He's certainly not, not happy with his weekend so far. You know, he's had a couple of uh, what he considers to be really bad results. And uh, he's hopefully going to re renew this sort of sponsorship uh, from Komatsu and Pertec. So he obviously wants to get a good result. And as you say, he's been so consistent up until now. And it's Sod's law that today turns out a disaster for him. John Faulkner in the 46, better electrical, Fisher and Pike or Commodore. He is hounding the back of Russell Ingle. He is currently in sixth position. And I'm going to take a gamble here and say that this would be his best Shell Australian touring car result. Right up on Russell Ingle now. Have a look at this. John Faulkner, the super speedway specialist turned circuit racer now, is having a tremendous run here at Sandown. Well, he is, and I was just looking. You look here at the speed. Just Ingle is just pulling away straight line speed, but uh, there's not a mammoth amount in it. Well, Faulkner's got two laps left to do something about Russell Ingle. I don't think that Ingle's going to give in easy with only two laps to run, and his point situation the way it is, uh, he's going to hang on to this for a grim death. Keeping you up to date up top, it's still Glenn Seaton with a, almost a four-second lead now over John Bow, so that's Sandown Hoodoo. 
for Glenn Seaton is about to be broken with only uh, one and a half laps remaining. Here's the battle at the moment between Castro Commodore and uh, of Russell Engel and John Faulkner. Fourth and fifth, rather fifth and sixth at the moment is still Longhurst, Johnson, Jones and Gardner. They are your top ten. There's a Shell Helix race score for you now in your top left corner of your screen. Faulkner's good under brakes. Yeah, he is good under brakes, but the problem is, unless he really can stay in the draft of Ingle, he hasn't got a cat and L's chance of getting past because there's no, you know, unless he can really get a good uh, get a good run and out the slipstream and uh, he should be quite happy, he looks nice and relaxed out for a Sunday afternoon drive. One more lap to go. He has just gone over the start finish line into turn one. He is on his way home. He and John Bow, they've been very consistent today, both finishing. It's going to be a one-two for uh, each of them in all of the three races. Ex-teammates, ex-Bathurst teammates, 1987, they finished second there. You remember the days yeah, of the Eggenberger yes, Sierras when they got rubbed out? And Seaton and Bauer were elevated up into second position. But it's Glenn's day today. There's JB, has run a very good race. He was telling Mark Osler earlier on that he was suffering from some mid-corner lack of grip. But it certainly hasn't affected him well, too no, much. You know, it's been, it's, it shows that they're getting the thing sorted out. You know, they're having terrible understeer problems with it. But uh, consistency in this championship is the thing that's going to win it. Well, while these guys are running close to 15 second, la one minute 15 second laps, Greg Murphy has just put in a 1.13.71. The Murph is on fire, but it's all too late because they're on their way home. This, the 30, Ford Credit Falcon of Glenn Seaton. He qualified second fastest. And he comes onto the main straight. He has won the first two races and he has won this one. It is a clean sweep for Glenn Seaton. Three starts, three wins for the fourth credit falcon of Glenn Seaton. Oh, look at that. Uh, great. He has a look at our camera and says, You beauty. <laughs> he gets in for a clean sweep. Good on you, Glenn. What a fantastic day's racing. He will be absolutely delighted with that and his team. They're a hard working bunch of guys. In for second was John Bow. Greg Murphy did remain in third position ahead of Mark Scaife and Russell Engel. That was a terrific race. Well, it was, and you've got to hand it to Faulkner to get up into six ahead of Tony Longhurst and Alan Jones, Dick Johnson and Wade Gardner. That is no mean feat. So Jones did end up getting uh, ahead of uh, Dick Johnson in for that eighth position. There they are, all the boys, bringing it home after a hard day's work. And I'm certainly sure that the Gibson Motorsport team would be very happy with their boys' efforts. Mark Scaife has had a terrific day. There's Russell Ingle just cruising around. He ended up finishing in fifth position. It was a bit of hard work for him. He got, he was made to work hard from Greg Murphy and also John Faulkner. There he is. Good on you, John Faulkner. What a terrific day for you. That is his best result so far in the Shell Australian Touring Car Championship as a privateer to finish almost in the top five is a tremendous effort to his team Roscoe and all the boys Les Small everyone they will be over the moon here's Dick Johnson ended up finishing in ninth position and I'd say that was his hardest race of the day. It did look like it, didn't it? Because he was uh, really having to struggle and when every time we got the in-car camera shot he looked like he was working really hard at it I reckon the prize today ought to go to uh, the mechanics of Russell Lingle, changing one of those motors in under an hour. Oh, that ain't bad. Well, let's check the final placings for you. The Shell Helix race score, Glenn Seaton, a clean sweep today. John Bow in for second, Greg Murphy held on for third, Mark Scape in for fourth, and Russell Lingle in for fifth. In sixth place, John Faulkner, great drive from him from Tony Longhurst, Alan Jones, Dick Johnson and Wayne Gardner.